C'est une star internationale qui réussit l'exploit d'allier le glamour des tapis rouges et la simplicité d'une bonne copine. Et pour cause, voici plus de 20 ans qu'elle est entrée dans nos foyers avec notamment le succès mondial de Desperate Housewives. Mais cela ne l'a pas empêché de s'émanciper des séries télé pour se lancer dans des projets audacieux en tant que productrice et réalisatrice, comme en atteste le film qu'elle vient nous présenter ce soir, tout à son image. Eva Longoria est en aparté. Hello, hello Eva Longoria, bonsoir. Bonjour. Ah bonsoir, yes it's night time, sorry. Bienvenue en aparté, ravi de vous accueillir. Oh my god, I'm gonna cry. This looks like a flaming hot. Mais je, je peux marcher vous en Vous vous comme vous le souhaitez dans cet appartement qui vous ah. est dédié. Mais c'est un, un petit peu très bizarre parce que c'est la première fois que j'ai fait une interview comme ça. Oui, c'est vrai. <rire> Pourtant, vous en connaissez des plateaux télé à travers le monde. Vous, vous avez fait tous les shows possibles non, et imaginables. c'est très unique. Euh, c'est très unique, yes, yes. <rire> Alors, le café est chaud. Il est français. Vous aimez le café français? Oh my God, yes. I'm going to... Let me get my coffee. Oh. First things first. Hold on. <rire> Vous pouvez vous installer, vous verrez, il y a plusieurs espaces dans cet appartement. Vous avez repéré, oh bien sûr, le, le buffet, le comptoir, yeah. plusieurs espaces, plusieurs ambiances. Euh, Mikasa okay. et Sukasa, <rire> est-ce que c'est -ce est, euh, une phrase signée Eva Longoria, véritablement Oui, je suis mexicaine, je suis mexicaine. Donc, pour moi, c'est comme « mi casa es tu casa », c'est un um, style de vie, c'est la façon dont nous sommes. Nous invitons des gens, nous avons une maison pleine de amis, nous avons toujours... La maison est toujours pleine et pleine d'amour, donc oui. Nous avons envie, bien sûr, d'en savoir davantage sur vous, Eva Longoria, aujourd'hui. On sait aussi votre amour pour la France. Vous savez, je pense que j'étais française dans un passé de vie. Je pense que j'étais française dans un passé de vie. Je pense que j'étais française dans un passé de vie. Je pense que j'étais française dans un passé de vie. Je pense que j'étais française dans un passé de vie. Je pense que j'étais française dans un passé de vie. Je pense que j'étais française dans un passé de vie. Je pense que j'étais française dans un passé de vie. Je pense que j'étais française dans un passé de vie. Je pense que j'étais française dans un passé de vie. Je pense que j'étais française dans un passé de vie. Je pense que j'étais française dans un passé de vie. Je pense que j'étais française dans un passé de vie. Je pense que j'étais française dans un passé de vie. Je pense que j'étais He showed me the best of what this country is. And uh, so that was, I've had a love affair with uh, France for a very long time. Et la France qui vous le rend bien, la France qui est évidemment, elle aussi, toujours très fidèle parce que, les, mm. bien sûr, les, les réseaux sociaux, bien sûr, vos fans se trouvent aussi bien sur les réseaux qu'on va le voir dans l'accueil qu'ils vont réserver, c'est sûr, à votre film Flamine Hot, on va en parler. On va en parler même maintenant, si vous êtes d'accord. Parce que okay. vous êtes multicasquette. Oh, there's a theater On a adoré Flamine Hot. Je suis tombée en amour de Richard Montagnès. Yeah. Est-ce que je prononce bien <rire> Yeah, Montagnès. Very good. Et oui, parce que vous êtes productrice, activiste, philanthrope, businesswoman, mère, sœur, épouse, bien sûr. Et là, aujourd'hui, c'est votre premier vrai film en tant que réalisatrice. Il est incroyable, cette yeah. histoire. C'est vraiment le rêve américain. Yeah. Il est disponible sur Disney+. Est-ce que mm -hmm. vous avez repéré, bien sûr, yes. les, les flamines hautes? Cheetos qui sont oh, sur la yeah. table basse. I, do you have them in France? <laughs> Flaming Hot Cheetos? Uh, pas aussi bon, uh. pas aussi savoureux. Yeah, because <laughs> if you have them in Mexico, you'll die because they're so hot. Um, I grew up with, with this uh, product and I never knew the story um, about the Mexican janitor who invented it. And so when I, when I found this story, I became obsessed and I was like, I must, I must. Tell his story. Cette histoire, effectivement, elle est impressionnante. C'est vraiment le rêve américain. On regarde la... quelques images et vous me oh. livrez les coulisses ensuite. Ok. <rire> I love watching the trailer. <rire> What is it? It burns. You must stop eating it. No, I like it. It was good. I had been searching for an answer, and there it was. They had been there the entire time. I got an idea. It's a spicy chip. It's gonna change everything. It will save our factory. And you're a janitor. Okay, no, 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 hang on. No one can kill you. Figure out the next step. Say, the Hispanic market will not be ignored. The Hispanic market will not be ignored. Good, but in your voice. <laughs> Why are we wasting time on this janitor's crazy idea? 
Guys like you and me, we don't get shots like this. You see that guy right there? I see a chingon, a montañez. Yo soy montañez. Soy montañez. Get out there and be great. Hold you back. We want to know that we matter to you. If we knew that there was a product out there for us, we'd say, take all our money, cabrones. I got a little hood there at the end, but... Elle est très inspirante, cette histoire yeah. de Richard Montagnès et de sa famille, d'ailleurs. Je crois que vous avez été très ému en la lisant. Comment vous l'avez découverte Yes, yes. Well, he's Mexican-American like me. I'm Mexican-American, and... Um, We have a very unique experience in the United States uh, because sometimes, you know, in the United States, they're like, oh, you're Mexican. And then when we go to Mexico, they're like, oh, you're the American. And so we're never, we never really fit in anywhere. And so I really felt um, I could identify with, with that. Um, but also his, his, like, drive and perseverance and his tenacity. I mean, he really, um, he really did faced so many obstacles in his life and um, and still kept going. Like, he shouldn't be alive, much less successful. And so to accomplish something like this is, uh, is inspiring to many people who think like, oh, you know, I have so many obstacles in my life. I, won't, I can't do that. And then they look at this movie, they go, wow, if that guy did it, I, I for sure, I can do anything. Ça vous ressemble beaucoup parce que je sais que vous avez toujours eu cette phrase « J'ai toujours eu foi en mes compétences. Si j'avais été avocate, j'aurais été une grande avocate. Si j'avais été dentiste, j'aurais été une excellente yeah. dentiste. » C'est ce que vous dites, vous aussi. Vous êtes très <rire> opiniâtre, euh, Eva Longoria. Euh, je me suis demandé, quelle est la réalisatrice Qu'est-ce qui vous définit sur un plateau <rire> Efficient. Uh, I'm very efficient. I, um, you know what I started directing about 10 years ago and I found that I... I was, I'm a natural. I really love it. I feel very comfortable behind the camera. I'm very knowledgeable. I, I knew more than what I felt like I knew. I was like, oh, I know this. Um, I'm a good storyteller. Um, I think, you know, when you see Flaming Hot, it's my personality because it's funny, it's energetic, it's touching, it's heart tugging, it's emotional, it's inspirational. It has pace, it moves. And so when, every time if you really know me and you see the movie, people go, oh my God, that's so Eva. Like the movie in general, the, just the overall tone of it is, is me. Alors ce film, il a été projeté à la Maison Blanche, yeah. Eva Longoria, en présence du couple présidentiel. Qu que, quels ont été les mots de Joe Biden oh, Que vous ont-ils dit, le couple présidentiel They were amazing. The first time in the history of the White House that a, a, a film about Latinos was shown and screened Uh, it was, I'm still, I still can't believe it. They lit the whole White House up like a Cheeto. Uh, <laughs> um, and there was a thousand Latinos on the lawn of the people's house, which is the White House, and crying. People were crying um, because they felt seen and they felt part of the country. And oftentimes Latinos don't feel part of the United States. And, um, you know, we often feel marginalized. So to be, you know, welcomed in that way, Um, and celebrated on screen as well. It was, it was a moment I'll never forget. But yeah, I mean, you know, Biden said a lot about the American dream and how he loved Richard's story. He, he knows Richard Montañez and he thought, you know, it's a great example of the opportunity that, you know, our country has to offer. So I think he was very inspired by the film. On va voyager avec vous, Eva Longoria, tout au long de cette émission. Est-ce que okay. vous voulez bien vous déplacer, faire quelques oh, pas sure. vers le comptoir, yes. le buffet Oh, the food Alors, counter on était... Oh oui, my gosh. On était, on oh était à God, Paris. Love... Ah, presse de bois Oh <rire> my God Can I eat this Vous pouvez tout goûter, bien sûr. Oh my God. Alors, vous avez repéré qu'on avait oh fait un comptoir aussi bien français que mexicain It is. There's like macaroons and guacamole. <laughs> yeah. Alors, I've votre plat seen... préféré en France? Oh my God. Fuez de bois. It's my favorite. I hate that they're only in season for like a very short amount of time. I was just like, oh my God. I'm so happy. Qu'est-ce que vous prenez au petit déjeuner en France Parce que, excusez-moi Eva Longoria, mais j'ai cru comprendre, j'ai cru comprendre que les tacos au haricot rouge le matin, c'était une habitude. 
<laughs> bean tacos. Bean tacos is my everyday breakfast, but not in France. <laughs> in France, I have a French omelette. Like, how can you not be in France and not have a French omelette? Alors, si on imaginait, parce que je crois que, est-ce que votre endroit préféré à la maison, c'est la cuisine? Yes, by far. I mean, I, I actually, it's in between my, the kitchen and, uh, and my closet. <laughs> but for the most part, it's my, it's my kitchen, yeah. <laughs> Quel est le plateau télé idéal, par exemple Avec, euh, je sais pas, avec Victoria Beckham, votre amie, ou avec Santiago, votre petit garçon, ou avec votre, votre amoureux quel est, quel est le plateau idéal ouais, avec là-bas. des petites choses qu'on vous a préparées ici Il y a aussi du fromage français, oh, vous l'avez oh, repéré. Oh, sure. Oh my gosh, there's cheese. Yes, of course, it's like fraise de bois and cheese from France. But um, if I was home, if I was home and I cooked dinner, it's usually Mexican food. It's always Mexican food, and it's usually tacos. I usually make different, a whole taco bar, and I'll make chicken tacos and beef tacos and veggie tacos, and I have guacamole and salsa and all of that. So, yeah, that's my usual, usual dish that I serve or make. <laughs> Alors, si on claque des doigts, c'est la magie d'un aparté. Regardez, claquer des doigts, Eva Longoria. Regardez. On est à Mexico, oh on est dans cette like, ville moderne, Sam, vivante, oh, Mexico. Yeah. Ouais. Évidemment, le goût, les bons produits aussi, c'est la transmission euh, liée à votre papa qui vous a éduqué avec les produits de la terre. On en a disposé yeah. aussi quelques-uns. Il y a aussi votre tante Elsa qui a beaucoup compté pour vous, qui vous a transmis mm-hmm. sa passion de la cuisine. D'ailleurs, vous avez écrit plusieurs yeah. livres de, de recettes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I... Um... I grew up on a ranch, and so my dad wouldn't let us eat out. Like, we couldn't eat fast food, or we never ate at a restaurant. Um, He said, everything we need is here, and you eat off the land. So if it was, like, squash season, we would have squash for months, and I'd be like, I hate squash. And then it would be watermelon season, and we'd have to eat so much. Like, we always ate seasonally, and, um, and we weren't. We never really ate out, so cooking and being in the kitchen with, you know, natural ingredients was was how I grew up. Um, except sometimes, once a month, when my when my mom got paid, she would get us a, a Domino's pizza on Friday, and we would eat the pizza, and we'd have to throw away the pizza boxes at my neighbor's trash so that my dad wouldn't see the boxes. <laughs> Tout ça est bien sûr présent, cette harmonie, mais aussi cette mixité dans votre cuisine, Eva Longoria. On va passer au salon, après la cuisine. Oh on God, va passer au salon, un salon très cosy. Bois? Vous pouvez les emporter avec vous. Non, je suis prenez, prenez avec vous, Eva. Gonna... Oh. Okay. Euh, le petit fauteuil gris, près de la mégalopole euh, que vous connaissez oh, bien, dans laquelle vous avez, vous avez, bien sûr, euh, vous passez une partie de l'année. Je vous en prie, installez-vous. Ah, there it is. Et voilà, <rire> voilà, évidemment. <rire> Je vous en prie, installez-vous. La télécommande est à droite sur la petite oh table. Oh my God, look how fun. Okay. Let's see. Et le bouton central okay. va vous permettre de découvrir une première image oh si God. vous appuyez. I don't know if I want to see this. <rire> oh my God, I feel like I look older there than I do now. Like, what was I... This was, this was, I'm a, I'm from Texas. So in Texas, we like big hair, big hair and lots of makeup. And so this was, this was that. It was, I, you, this isn't black and white, but if it was in color, that is, I, that's the reddest lipstick you've ever seen. And my hair, we would tease it really big for the pageants. Oh my gosh, this is. This is. Concours de beauté, il est important pour vous. Il est même déterminant, euh, yeah, this one, n'est-ce yeah. pas, Eva Longoria? Yes, because in first of all, right before this, I I was in my senior year of college, and I ran out of money. Like my my financial aid ran out, everything ran out, and my parents weren't paying for college. Like that was just not possible. Um, and I remember my girlfriend saying hey, you should enter this scholarship pageant because you can win money for school. And I was like, okay, what is it? What, what do I have to do? It's like a beauty pageant. I'd never been in a beauty pageant. I grew up as La Prieta Fea, which is the ugly dark one. And I was like, okay. And I looked at the prizes and I saw fourth place was um, 
like books. They would pay for my books. And I said, okay, if I could just get fourth place and then if I get four jobs, like I was trying to figure out how I could afford to finish college, the university. And, um, and uh, I ended up winning that one. And so I win that one and I'm like, oh my God, I can't believe it. And so I paid for college, but because I won that one, they go, okay, you have to go to the next one. And I was like, oh no, 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 I don't want to, I don't want to keep going. So I had to enter Miss Corpus Christi and, and then I won Miss Corpus Christi. And then they were like, okay, now you have to go to Miss Texas. I was like, I don't, I don't want to be a pageant girl. I just needed money for college. So this was, um, in this prize package was a trip to Los Angeles. And this one was special because I grew up in Corpus Christi. So to be Miss Corpus Christi was like a big deal. Um, and, uh, yeah, and I went to L.A. and I never came home. And, et voila, here we are. <laughs> Vous voulez bien appuyer sur le bouton? Yes, sorry. I was like, nothing is happening. Oh, that's Desperate Housewives. Oui. What the hell are you doing? Oh, I'm helping you pack. Think of all the money you're going to save on bubble wrap. Hey! Do you know how much that was worth? Ah! Do you know how much I was worth? When we met, I was on the cover of magazines. I had a career and a future, but I gave it all up for you. And what did I get in return? If you break one more thing, so help me. What? What are you gonna do? Et Desperate Housewives, bien sûr, l'épisode 7 de la saison 3. Cette série cultissime, hein, lancée en 2004. Vous êtes Gabrielle Solis, vous devenez une star mondiale. Cette personnalité, Gabrielle Solis, euh, cette Latina riche avec un jardinier blanc. Qu'est-ce qui vous plaît Qu'est-ce qui vous plaît dans ce rôle, dans ce personnage Everything. Oh, I love being Gabby Solis. I miss Gabby. I miss being in her, in her shoes, in her outfits. Um, Yeah, it was pretty groundbreaking. And I was so young. I was a baby. I look at that and I'm like, why does my voice sound like that? Um, but yeah, it was, I remember reading the pilot and I thought, oh, this is so different. It will never succeed. It's never going to get picked up. And never did I imagine 10 years of my life would be dedicated to, to this show and to Gabby, to Gabby Seuss. But I loved it. I loved every minute of of the show and the girls and the writing. And we just had so much fun. It was a really fun time in my life. Vous dites que ça vous manque, Eva Longoria, uh, Desperate Housewives. On pourrait imaginer mm -hmm. que vous retrouviez vos partenaires, une suite, un spin-off? Oh, I always. I always say I'm the first one that would sign up for, for a, a, a reboot or a spin-off, but um, nobody wants to do it. They, they feel, especially the writer, the creator, Mark Cherry, really feels like there's nothing left to say, you know, we, we did a decade of this show, 24 episodes a year. That was a lot. Next year's going to be 20 years. 2024 will be 20 years. Vous ne manquez pas d'activité pour autant, Eva Longoria. Il y a un rendez-vous très fort aussi que j'aimerais bien que vous nous racontiez. On va d'abord voir les images et c'est vous qui êtes euh, okay. aux commandes de la télécommande toujours. OK. Shouldn't I be the one who goes undercover as a maid? Wouldn't that be better? No, no. This story isn't about you. It's about the maids. It's about Latina empowerment. Back me up here, Eva. Mm, I don't know. Do all the maids have to be Latina? Seems kind of racist. No, it isn't. Not all maids are Latina, but these maids are. If we change the race of the murdered maid, we can get somebody better than Eva. <laughs> okay, that's it. I'm on. By the way, you are the meanest person I have ever met. And I worked on Desperate Housewives. <laughs> c'est Devious Meds, yeah. saison 4, épisode 1. Et c'est la seule apparition hein, que vous nous avez réservée. Yeah. Vous jouez votre propre <laughs> rôle. Euh, vous êtes l'une des productrices. Mm -hmm. Vous avez réalisé certains épisodes. Yeah. C'est le projet qui vous stimulait. Yes, well, it was created by Mark Cherry. Um, who created Desperate Housewives. It was right after Desperate Housewives ended. And um, it's, it was so clever. It was a really clever show where the maids were the moral compass of the world. And this is when I started directing TV. Productrice, cette casquette aussi de productrice, réalisatrice, on en a parlé, productrice. Vous choisissez mm -hmm. bien sûr les projets. Vous êtes yes. totalement en autonomie. Vous... Cette liberté elle, elle vous stimule, elle vous motive. Yeah, I mean, you know, when I was on Desperate Housewives, I really 
thought about my future and what I wanted to do. And I felt like I want, I want to control more of the final product. You know, when you're an actor, you go and you step on a mark and you say lines and then you go home. You don't really um, have much else to, much else, you know, to say. You don't really get to pick who is opposite of you or that take that they use or editing or marketing. And so you're at the mercy of so many other people. And so I was like, no, I want to, I want to have more control about what is out there with my image. And then also I wanted the opportunity to tell different stories, which I feel, you know, Flaming Hot's a really good example of like, I, I had an opportunity to define what a hero looks like. Hollywood always defines what heroes look like and they never look like us. They never look like, you know, the Mexican American community. They never look like Richard. Uh, and so I thought, you know, I want to, I want to get behind the camera and create the stories and the images that I want to see in, in, in the media. Du sens, c'est ce que vous cherchez aussi toujours, Eva Longoria. Yeah. Euh, vous débordez d'activités, vous avez des combats, hein, vous êtes engagée, vous êtes une femme de projet. Euh, on peut parler bien sûr de votre fondation, c'est essentiel dans votre carrière et dans votre existence, n'est-ce pas Cette fondation yeah. et mm -hmm. précisément euh, Las Casa Angeles, expliquez-nous oh, un yes. petit peu. Oui, Casa Angeles est partie de la Global Gift Gala que nous faisons tout le monde. Nous le faisons dans like, neuf pays. Um, but we built this house in Marbella um, to deliver therapies to kids who don't have access to um, uh, the therapies that they need in life. There's all kinds of different rooms in the house, different activities. We just started our summer camp, so that's where I'm, I just flew in to do this, to be with you guys. But right now I'm in, in Marbella right now with uh, the summer camp for the kids. Maria Bravo is an angel Uh, who um, created this initiative with Alina Peralta and I. And we just thought, you know, there are so many amazing charities in the world and we wanted to connect the dots and connect uh, humanitarian efforts everywhere, all over, to, um, to learn from each other and help each other, you know. And it's just been a, it's been my life's work. This is probably the most important thing in my, in my life, for sure. Eva, on a bien sûr parlé de vos engagements, euh, on a parlé d'Esperat Housewives, de votre yeah. film Flamine Hot. Vous avez mm -hmm. une carrière extrêmement dense. Euh, yeah. J'ai aussi envie de parler de votre image. Est-ce que vous êtes d'accord Parce oh, que vous êtes ambassadrice d'une célèbre image. marque française depuis, depuis près de 20 ans maintenant. Euh, vous yeah. voulez bien vous déplacer Yes, oh yes. Of course. Alors, yes, where vous avez fait now? la une et vous faites continuellement la une de nombreux magazines à travers le monde. Vous allez voir quelques images sur votre gauche. Ah et voilà, <rire> tous, yes. vous êtes partout. Oh, you have this one, it's brand new. On va prolonger l'exercice dans le miroir qui est euh, un peu plus loin sur votre droite, à l'autre bout de l'appartement. Okay. Voilà, exactement. Ce miroir... Que dit ce miroir, Eva Longoria, de vous Vous avez dit tout à l'heure, euh, j'étais le vilain petit canard quand j'étais euh, yes. gamine. <laughs> oh, uh, uh, this one says, uh, um, because I'm worth it. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Um, no, it's so funny because I, I feel like, you know, the images that are put out, I mean, it's, it's an illusion and it takes a village. This is, I don't wake up like this. Um, That's why I really feel like um, being with a brand like L'Oreal has been such a blessing because they've always been more about self-worth and like identifying your self-worth in life, in your relationships, in your job. Um, and so to be able to be with a brand like that, that is not about selling lipstick and hair color. It's about, hey, you know, you're worth so much more than you realize in your life. And so that's, I, I grew up that way. Because I didn't grow up as the pretty one, my mom really didn't place a lot of value in beauty. So I, I didn't place a lot of value in beauty. I appreciate, you know, all of these things and I appreciate, you know, where I am with my relationship with beauty, but it doesn't define me. And I think, um, you know, when I was young, I said, I'm going to be the smart one. I'm, okay, I'm not the pretty one. My sisters were the pretty one. Uh, and so, okay, I'm not the pretty one, so I'm going to be the smart one. Or I said, I'm going to be the funny one. And I feel like that that is my life. Like, that's why I became an actor. That's why I'm, um, you know, as, have my master's and I'm in academia. Like, I feel like, for me, that, uh, that really shaped me uh, when growing up. I didn't place so much value in, in I must be beautiful, you know. 
Est-ce que vous voulez bien faire quelques pas vers la bibliothèque euh, on, un, deux Over here voilà. La bibliothèque avec les disques, yeah. avec les DVD, avec les <rire> livres qui vous accompagnent. Oh my God, my favorite show ever. Call my agent. Oui. I love vous the show. Vous avez acheté les droits. I have the Spanish language rights. I'll be directing this in Spanish. I hopefully will be on it as well. Um, this is just uh, these. All of these people are so talented. Um, it's such a great idea. It's such a great concept, and it's universal. And God, God is like. One of my favorite human beings. I want to do a movie with him, but he won't call me back. Gad Elmaleh, c'est vrai? Yeah. On lui fera passer le message. Thank you. Please. <laughs> Génial. Oh, so uh, Eva Longoria, attendez, si vous tendez l'oreille, je sais que vous aimez le son qu'on va vous proposer. Okay. Écoutez. Wait, okay, yes, yes. My Kenji. He changed this to Eva, not Bella. Kenji's amazing. Eh oui, on adore Kenji en France aussi, bien sûr. Um, we met, he won The Voice, and, and I think like that night he came to the Global Gift Gala, and he's been helping us raise funds for children all over the world for the last 10 years. I mean, he's been, he's been, he was, it was so cute because he was so young. He was so young when uh, we met. And, uh, and he had a crush on me. <laughs> he had a crush on me. <laughs> he, was, he, was, he was a baby. Uh, but he sang me that song, but it, he changed the words to Eva. Donc avec Kenji Girac et Valongoria, yeah. nous on est ravis évidemment de passer du temps avec vous dans cet euh, appartement. On vous a réservé une petite surprise aussi. Oh, you do? Oh, God. Hold on, real quick. Ricky Martin is, is my celebrity crush will always be my celebrity crush. And he's one of my best friends. I love him so much. But, um, oh my God. I met him when I was 14 years old. I stood in line for an autograph when he was in Menudo. Uh, and then later in life, I stalked him. When I became famous, I was like, oh, we're going to be friends. Vous êtes devenu ami. Okay. Oh, do you have a surprise? <laughs> Is it Ricky? Is he coming? Is he here? On a un petit cadeau pour vous, bien sûr, oh. Eva Longoria, pour, pour vous remercier d'avoir fait un détour par, en aparté. Regardez la boîte, vous l'avez vu. Et oui, ça va vite, I trop vite, je over. suis d'accord avec this vous. C'est trop fast, je parle trop lentement, je suis désolé. Oh my god, c'est heavy. Ok. Oh, Catalunya! Et oui, parce que vous revenez d'un tournage à Barcelone, je crois. Yeah. Yes, thank you so much. Alors voilà cet ouvrage en anglais, en espagnol, en français pour tout savoir de cette belle région et thank puis you. bien sûr très proche de la France hein, parce que en voiture on rejoint Perpignan que vous I aimez know. aussi particulièrement je crois. I love Perpignan, I love Montpellier, I love this, I love all the south. But there was another town that was even closer. But we would drive to because I stayed in Figueras actually. I wasn't in Barcelona. I was in Figueras, which is basically France. Everybody speaks French there. <laughs> and uh, the border was like 45 minutes. I had so much fun. And I had a lot of access to French butter, which was very important. So. <laughs> si vous venez vous installer en France, alors ce sera plutôt le sud ou Paris? Um, it would not be in Paris. It might be in the north or the south. I really loved the north of France. I love Brittany and Normandy and Deauville and... Um, You know, I, I, when I was married to Tony, because he was on the French national team, we always had to play in these tiny towns. Like, he always made fun of me because I love Limo Limoges. He was like, you can't love Limoges. I'm like, I love Limoges. Uh, Fécamp, you know, where he had a, a basketball camp. Um, Lyon, I love Lyon. Uh, I love... Um, Of course, the South. I mean, who doesn't love the South? Merci infiniment, Eva Longoria, d'être venue nous voir. Thank euh, you. Il faut regagner cette porte. Euh, je vais venir vous accueillir, bien oh, sûr. Gosh. Euh, on okay. va regarder Flamin Hot euh, disponible sur Disney Plus. Il faut le découvrir. Il faut. Vous yes. allez tomber amoureux de you Richard Montagnez et de Judy et de leurs enfants aussi, bien sûr. C'est une histoire aussi de famille et de détermination. Yeah. Une très belle histoire. Merci infiniment. Thank you. Eva Longoria. Thank d'être venu nous you. voir. Je viens vous saluer de l'autre côté oh de la, de la so porte. <rire> et vous avez une expression française préférée, je crois, avec mm. une vache. Ah, il pleut comme la vache d'épice. Magnifique, yes. c'était le mot de la fin. C'est la première chose que j'ai appris. Magnifique avec cet accent. Merci infiniment, Eva Longoria. Merci. Vous pouvez ouvrir la porte. Oh. 
<rire> Merci okay. Eva. Oh, I come out. Ok. Elle répondait ton nom de veille, là. Les gens du col ne 